Hi everyone, I'm recording this now, so uh, bear with me, we're going through everything. I'm Lausanne, hi. Thank you for joining me on this webinar. Um, it's really very important for me to share what I've learned and how my life has changed in the six months that I've been focusing completely on my health. So um, I put together a small uh, presentation just to uh, help those who love to see words. I am one of those who love to see words when explaining things. It just sticks better in our memories. So for those who like words, I've got words. Those who like audio, I've been talking the whole time. So, um, and we'll hopefully have some space at the end to ask some questions. Um, also, I only have the 40 minutes available, so we'll try and keep it short so we can have questions afterwards. So let me see if I can, yeah, let's go to this one. Share screen. Let's start here. All right. So, Claire, can you see that perfectly? Yeah, I can see that, okay. yeah. All right, I'm going to go into this. All right. So basically, these are photos of myself in the past year. Uh, the first one is with Denise Duffield Thomas last year. And um, I think it was at this stage of my life that I realized um, I needed to get my shit together because I am going to die. With that amount of weight around, Denise is pregnant at that stage, so, and I'm almost comparatively the same size as her, just with belly fat. Um, and it's been proven now, time and time again, that um, tummy fat is visceral fat as well, so it's around your organs, it can lead to diabetes and all that stuff. So, um, in this last year, um, a lot of health issues came up after that so and that has led me to follow a modified ketogenic diet um, so I'll be introducing myself I'll do what is a ketogenic diet is a ketogenic diet for you how to start a ketogenic diet I just call it keto so anyone I can I'll keep the ketogenic in a file but um, I just go call it keto um, and where to find out more. So about me, as I explained um, about in the last year, I've discovered quite severe um, health problems. I was diagnosed with Graves disease, which is a hypothyroidism. Um, my uh, score was off the scales. Um, I, nobody in my family has it. I was the first. It is thought that it was caused by an infection I got somewhere, a virus, and then attacked my thyroid because I had stats for years and years going that nothing was wrong with my thyroid. Um, so I got to a really, really bad T4 and T3 scores. And, um, and with that, I was diagnosed with pre-diabetic and insulin resistant, which I always knew actually I had because I was diagnosed with PCOS um, in my 20s. Um, so things to do with insulin, things to do with hormones were always kind of in my background for health. Um, I left it to everyone else to sort out. So either through medication or, but I get bored with medication. Honestly, I get bored. So when someone says to me, you're going to spend your rest of your life on this medication because your thyroid won't be able to work again. Um, I, I said, all right, I'll try it for a little bit, but then I'll stop. <laughs> so I, in the meantime, I'm trying to find a way of replacing the medication. I found I had to change my lifestyle. So um, I started down the old route of eating less, eating more greens, doing more protein, um, exercising six days a week, an hour a week, uh, hour at a time, I was knackered. I couldn't, I couldn't sustain it. I, 
and then I crash. I have a piece of something that I can't have on the diet and I would crash. Um, I would feel guilty. I would feel um, oh, not worthy of ever having a lifestyle, which everyone else boasts about. They found the lifestyle that makes them happy and, and all that stuff. Um, and I just thought that was out of my reach. It was completely out of my reach. So I started reading, finding out more. And as life is, when you start looking for things, it, things come to you. And you try it and see if it works and then move on if it doesn't. Just keep looking, keep researching. So um, I started looking for a better answer. I knew I could get off the pre-diabetes um, watch list just by decreasing the amount of carbs I ate. But I wanted to also feel good doing it. So this has led me to keto. And, um, and definitely through the process of starting keto, I did do, started off very um, with a really rigid ketogenic diet. That's the basic one. And then found out there's actually several other types of keto diets modified. Um, and at this stage, I'm on a fat adapted one. So it gets you to a ketogenic state, um, but still including carbs. Um, and that has worked best for me because I'm, my hormones and things and time of month definitely dictates what my body needs and I found that out and just by listening to my body. So um, what is a ketogenic diet? It's completely different to what we know about current diets. It's what you know upside down. It is um, mostly fat um, intake. Your calories are mostly taken from fat. Um, Ketogenic diet is the process of changing from using glucose or carbohydrates as fuels to use dietary fat and body fat as fuel. Um, the diet consists of high fat, low carbohydrate and mo moderate protein intake. And with fat, I'm gonna, when I talk about dietary fat, I'm going to specify, specify from the beginning. I do not mean deep fried stuff or bad oils we all know there's a difference between them by now so when i say high intake of fat i mean good oils avocado um salmon omega-3 all those type of oils so i'm not going to explain it throughout the that fat when consumed on the ketogenic diet needs to be in its purest basic form so um yeah and why change to a fat burning diet? So that's the biggest question. But for me to, to answer that, I need to explain why it is better on a ketogenic, on a fat burning um, system rather than a carbohydrate system. And um, just give me time. Um, so we consume carbs. So I'm going to explain this in carb burning system first. So this is when you have potatoes, bananas, bread, pasta, sugar, fruit, all that stuff. So consume, um, consume carbs. We carbs get broken down into glucose, and that creates energy. We when we don't use all the energy, so our cells, our muscles don't use the energy immediately it gets stored as glycogen. So, and glycogen is stored in the liver and muscles for immediate release. So when you really need to run, you need that energy source in your muscles. But when that space in your muscles and liver, anyone heard about fatty liver? Yeah, this is it. Um, then the glucose is converted to fat and triglycerides, which is really bad for heart health um, and cardiovascular health. So, and that fat is gone everywhere else on your body. 
the same time when you, um, glucose enters the system, insulin is released. And um, insulin is a hormone created by the pancreas. It assists the body in letting the cells know to use the gl glucose or to store it. So it's the go between what happens between fat or glucose coming into the system and then being absorbed or being stored. It also signals the brain when we need more fuel. Um, very interesting fact is that we don't burn fat when we have insulin in our system. So if we have a high insulin amount or even any moderate amount of um, insulin, mod even high, let's keep it at high, um, we don't burn fat. So if we're constantly having carbs um, through the day, our insulin is constantly high because it's processing and sending signals to our cells um, that we have to use this glucose. Uh, and at that same time, none of the fat in our body, stored fat, gets used, which is first signal of, uh, okay, uh, we need to start reducing the insulin to get better fat burning. Okay. So um, when our glucose levels are constantly high, insulin is constantly high as well. And this leads to insulin, ins, insulin resistance. Most of you have heard it. I have it. I used to have it. Um, that's basically when your cells become resistant to listening to the insulin. So they don't listen. They say, we are tired, we need fuel, but we're not listening to you um, and we're not going to use your fuel. So uh, insulin then says to the brain, oh, we need more fuel because our cells are tired and they don't have any energy. So your brain says, oh, eat some more. Okay. Um, and it's this vicious cycle of too much insulin um, or glucose going in and not being used, your insulin getting the wrong message because your cells are not communicating with it and too much glucose in your system because it just keeps it there. Um, yeah, and that's why we feel really tired and exhausted and constantly can't lift stuff. Our muscles aren't working with us. It's just slunk to get through stuff. And it's because our cells are not talking to insulin and the glucose isn't going to our cells. Um, so when we change to a high fat, low carb, meat, moderate fat, um, moderate protein, we enable the glucose to be lower and insulin levels to drop as well, which makes a perfect state for us to start burning body fat. Um, when there's a concentration of glucose in the, in the blood, um, that fall, when the glucose falls really low, um, there's a hormone that's released called um, glucagon, glucagon, yeah, say that several times. Um, and that helps the body to use the fat that we have stored. So we want to be in that state where our um, glucose goes that low, insulin that low, that we can start burning fat, but also that we release this glucagon um, and our body knows to burn our excess fat. So um, now we start burning our body fat to, or stored fat um, for fuel, and this in turn creates ketone bodies. So now ketones is a primary source of fuel. It is high burning if we talk about logs and things like that, it is a intense amount of energy for our system and it's long burning. It's sustained energy. It is, um, it's a very, um, 
sustainable kind of energy to have in your system. So you don't need loads of it. You just need a cons the, the, the constant supply of it. Um, excuse me. Okay, so to explain, um, some diabetics might know about keto ketoacidosis. Ketosis is not ketoacidosis. This is a very dangerous um, situation for, uh, for diabetics when their insulin and um, glucose rise at the same time and uh, it's really bad. But ketosis is not the same as ketoacidosis. Um, some systems require glucose, like our red blood cells and some parts of our brain. Most part, and but actually, our body is able to turn amino acids from amino fatty acids from protein into glucose through a process called glycogenesis, and so we actually don't need to use um, loads and loads of glucose. So the process of nutritional ketosis is basically you start baby steps. I wanna emphasize this. This is not a start this tomorrow and run with it. There's a lot of things you need to consider. Um, processes need to be filled. There's a lot of um, other things that play, come into play in the ketogenic diet. So, um, but basically in the short term, I'll explain it. You reduce your carbohydrate in intake. This means your glucose levels drop. This means your insulin levels drop. This means that your stored energy, your stored fat is being slowly used up um, for energy. So step two, after your body has used as most of its um, glucose, which is stored in your liver and your muscles, your body will start to use fat for energy. So love handles and muscular fat and all the fat around your body. Um, and this is the fat adaptation phase as well. It's quite necessary to go through this phase because it is a building block of creating a system where you're switching from a carbohydrate burning um, system to uh, a fat fueled burning system. This is like going from a, a car that's diesel to using high octane petrol. And there is a little bit of work that needs to be done in your system, but through this phase of um, fat, ad fat adaptation, your body builds up uh, en enzymes to process the fat um, as fuel, and you get better at processing them. Uh, so the step three, you get to the dietary and stored fat broken down for energy. This means you can eat fat and you still get thin. That's it. You will eat loads and loads of fat and you will still get thin. And I've, pro I've proven this to myself so many times. I would go away for a weekend, have something bad, we have some bad fat, some maybe fried stuff, um, have some carbs even, you know, just, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a moderate, uh, modified ketogenic diet where I have carbs at nighttime, after I exercise, things like that. And um, I've just gone through periods of not following the diet very strict and I've still lost weight without trying or counting calories or counting micros. That's what in keto talk, you count your macros. There's nothing, I've done nothing of that in the last four months and I've lost weight consistently without anything doing anything drastically different. Obviously, you start living differently. You crave water, so you drink more water, which is good because it eliminates lots of toxins. You um, eat stuff that makes you feel good. You start feeling, well, 
this is what my body craves and this is what my body serves my body so you, you your mind needs some time to get with what's going on in your body as well so this whole fat adaptation phase is very important not just for your body to get into the system but for your system to also your head to get around it all right i'm getting close to my end so but basically we want to get to where our body is using the fat um, to turn into ketones which we burn for fuel and this is called ketosis um, when we are in nutritional ketosis why nutritional ketosis why do you say that so i uh, quickly there are products out there that um, I'm not going to say this correctly, so I'll just say it is a product that you drink or eat and it adds ketones to your body. Exonerous or something, they call it exonerous ketones. can't remember the name completely. And with my accent, I'm going to say it wrong anyway. So, um, but you can have keto, a ketosis on pure dietary what you put in your mouth um, from whole foods and from whole fats. So um, I'm focusing today completely on nutritional. So what you cook, what you eat, and what you can physically see. So when you're in nutritional ketosis, your blood sugar and insulin levels drop, your levels of HDL, um, your good cholesterol increase. For people who are on medication for cholesterol, and on fluoromargarine, I'm talking to someone very specific now that I know about. Um, I would prefer, <laughs> prefer you to try a keto diet before um, committing to a margarine um, replacement to get your ADL levels better or up. Um, you start burning stored fat and dietary fat, which means you lose weight. Visceral fat, that's the fat around your organs. And one that I was completely petrified about because I've never had a really big tummy, but after my second kid, my tummy just kept on growing. So I knew visceral fat was the thing that was going to kill me. And that was also the thing that escalated my insulin resistance, which escalated my um diabetes scores and my thyroid so um i'm very happy that my visceral fat is starting to go as well so chronic health problems like type 2 diabetes ibs pcos and many more are eliminated because you're eliminating the factor that is increasing then so like insulin um in your uh, system so it's definitely uh, something to consider when insulin is stable your appetite is reduced naturally so when I started a keto diet I did the fat in the morning fat in the uh, for lunch and fat in dinner so and when I say fat I don't mean fat I mean you had your eggs and bacon for breakfast with some greens with it Lunch, you had a salad with some olives and maybe some cheese and some uh, chicken and some mayonnaise, something healthy. And dinner, you would have um, something the same, a piece of meat, uh, some sautéed greens and vegetables and butter with some, uh, what else? Let me think. Something fatty avocado say some guacamole anyway but as i progressed i realized i wasn't hungry in the morning anymore all right so first belief that i needed breakfast out the door um i started finding more answers that there's a, a vein of keto diets people who follow uh, intermittent fasting so i tried it out and i realized that oh my goodness not only am i not hungry but the smallest amount of things would satisfy me if i do get hungry which is a um, amazing feat but you also 
gain two more hours in your day. Two more hours that you're not eating or preparing food, um, which is bad when you have kids because you forget that <laughs> they need food as well. But um, I've actually gained two, maybe two to three hours more a day just because I'm not eating. So I started off skipping breakfast and only having um, a rocket fuel or a, a bulletproof latte. And um, then I started skipping lunch because I was still full from my 11 o'clock uh, rocket fuel or bulletproof coffee. And then I started realizing that my signals for hunger were only starting at five o'clock in the afternoon. And, and I could eat dinner, which was smaller than I would usually have if I was having meals all through the day. Um, and that was just, that blew my mind. It was just, oh my goodness. I've never felt like I could feel when I was hungry or feel when I was full. I could feel when I was hungry, but I couldn't feel when I was full. So I would just always feel like I could eat. I could eat any time. And um, with the intermittent fasting, I started realizing, oh, I can listen to my body. My body is telling me something. And oh my goodness, I don't need a big plate full of stuff. I need this much. And I can stop and feel really satisfied. So by process of an elimination of getting carbs and insulin out of my system, I've actually gained the ability to listen to my body, to do things for my body that um, serves it. And that in itself is amazing. So um, yeah, the 20 kilos is a consequence of me following and being able to listen to my body. How amazing is that? So um, I'm almost finished. Um, our time is nearly up. Uh, is the ketogenic diet for you? There's some things you can go through, like, like I said, you, you can't stop eating. 30 minutes later, you're still hungry. Um, something's amiss with your hormones. Oh my goodness, I had the worst worst periods in my life um the last couple of years I, I thought it was because i had kids but no 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 it's actually my hormones and um i've gone from being diagnosed with pcos and in endometriosis i was so bad um with my periods that i now have like four days i don't even know when it's got when i start because usually I would get warnings of irritability and anger and just being a plain old B-I-T-C-H. And um, I now wake up one day in the morning and it starts at nine o'clock in the morning. Every time nine o'clock on that day it starts, which is, oh well, it's God, it's, it's, yeah. I'm still speechless. I can't believe it's so accurate. Um, and I've gone from uh, pads and a menstrual cup to just a menstrual cup for about two, three, three days at the max, four at the most. Yeah. So amazing results just for period related um, hormones. Also, my skin, my hair everything is better. I've got better hair than I had when I was pregnant with my son, which is usually what they say. You're pregnant, you have this massive amount of hair. I did, but this is just so much better. And I'm not scared that it's going to fall out like, like what it did with my son. So um, if any of these trigger you to go, oh, wow, well, yeah, that's me. Um, a ketogenic diet might be for you. So um, yeah, where can I find out more? The internet is full of it. Ketogenic every day, keto diet everywhere. So you can Google it. I just want to give you a fair warning. 
if you're a woman with, yeah, if you're a woman, period, I think, stop. I would suggest do not follow a man who has done it. The men can follow a very restrictive diet, a ketogenic diet, and they are quite adamant that you have to do a load of exercise as well. So it's usually the crossfitter kind of people. Um, if that gets your juices going, go for it, go for gold. But I warn, men's systems are very different to ours. And ketogenic diet takes that, a modified ketogenic diet takes that into account. Um, I have found Leanne Vogel's book, this book here, Ketogenic Diet. Sorry, that's upside down. But by Leanne Vogel. She is, uh, she runs Healthy Pursuits. She does online courses. You don't have to buy the book, but I bought mine from Amazon a while, like two months ago, a month ago. And I tell you what, it is worth every American cent that went into it. It's not much, it's like 30 something American dollars, which is a little bit more than that. But, um, So, yeah, I, I found that that could be um, the thing to do. Did I just cut that off? Sorry. Yeah. Um, and also, very right back. Um, I'm going to start a group which will be focusing on health and all its meanings. So I'm very passionate about health of women specifically, um, but not just health in the sense of feeling good and um, being off medication. I mean health in many aspects, like um, our health in finances, our health in our families, keeping them healthy, um, our health in our relationships, not with, with our husbands or our partners, but with our friends as well. Um, our health in mental, mental health is very important to me and I'll share um, some of my struggles with mental stuff, health stuff um, a little later in this month. I'm, I'm planning a little bit of a, a reveal on a share thing I'm going to do. So if you find that maybe some of this information is relevant to you and you want to know more, want some support, want to... Um, live a life where you are the best you and work towards that without judgment and with support then you're most welcome to join the group that i'm going to start and this is open to any woman um in australia in the southwest in the world because we will tackle things that you can do at home so um yeah that's me and thank you for watching. That's me. And if you have any questions, you can message me at foodies at Six Seasons Market or the Facebook page and my mobile. Yeah. So if there is any questions, we have some, we have a little bit of time left. Um, if we cut out before then, um, please message me your questions and uh, I'll try and answer them in the scope of my, my knowledge. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a process of um, finding what works for you. And I think the, the revelation for me doing keto was um, listening to my body was more important than losing the weight or um, sleeping better or, any of the things that I did um, discover I can do now. But um, I think that's the biggest takeaway for me was um, I'm now able to listen and make better decisions for myself, which is, which is bloody time. It's, I'm nearly 40, so <laughs> I need to start doing things better for myself if I'm going to stay here for my kids' sake um, a little bit longer. So, 
Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to ask, Claire? Um, no, it was very interesting. Sorry about my kids in the background. No, that's um, fine. That's life. Yes. <laughs> um, no, very interesting. Um, uh, yeah, really want to look into it a bit more. And um, yeah, um, I myself is probably in the same boat you are. Not wasn't ha not happy with my body, and um, yeah. I've sort of put on a bit of weight in the last couple of months and mm. yeah, same thing. I'm trying to lose it and looking at different ways to do it. So yeah. And pr probably where you started, like I'm been working out six days a week for the last two weeks and um, yeah, it is hard. It's hard to get to the gym and mm. yeah. Looking mm. for the first, like, I I've changed my diet a lot. I'm eating a lot healthier. Um, but yeah, the, the same thing, like, what do I go for? What foods do I go for? What works sort of thing and what doesn't? So yeah, definitely um, would be interested in looking into it more. All right. So um, we're nearly out of time. So I'm, I'm going to send out the link to the group um, mm -hmm. in the email in which this recording will be. So um, please join through that, that email then. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for joining me today and um, thank you for, for listening everyone. I really appreciate it and I'm here for your help uh, to help any which way you need. So let me know. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Bye. Bye.